Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. All right, so this morning I was going to pick up my laundry at the apartment complex I live at. And when I went to get it out of the dryer, there was a Jehovah's Witness woman coming in to drop off magazines. Now it's funny because I just told Laura, I said, you know, every time I go over and do laundry, I'm seeing Watchtower and Awake magazines. I wonder if someone lives here and they're, if they're one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And she said, no, we used to drive around and do that too. So I hadn't seen them until today happened. So here she is. She's got two magazines and you'll hear the conversation when we first start. And I asked her about Toni Morris and then I asked the gentleman that came after about Toni Morris. But there's just one point the reason I'm making this little intro, and I'm almost done here because I want you to hear the car crash or the laundromat crash. <laughs> the gentleman, when I asked him about Jesus praying to his father, where did he ever use the name Jehovah? I just kind of pressed even just a little bit and he got to the place where most of them do. That, well, it doesn't have to say it in the Bible, which is interesting. So as you listen to the conversation, you'll hear him say, does it have to be in there in that format? To which I said, I believe it should. Now notice when I start talking to him about Jesus being fully God and fully man, what's the first thing he said? Do you have a, is that in the Bible? Do you have a Bible verse for that? And I said, certainly open to John 1.1. 1, 1. You'll hear the conversation, but that's what I want you to catch. When it comes to his own beliefs, if you press them hard enough, they will inevitably come to a place where it doesn't have to be in there. The watchtower tells us. But when I tell them what I believe, he demands that I show him from the Bible. So I hope you see that contradiction. I do ask him about Toni Morris, and I think you're going to find what he has to say very, very interesting. Thank you so much for watching this. God bless everybody. Enjoy this laundromat crash. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm just fine. Oh, that's I'm good. I'm just leaving a couple of magazines out in case you didn't want to read. Oh, you wanted your home's witnesses? Yes. Oh, okay. Have you heard about uh, Tony Morris or Anthony Morris leaving the governing body or was he removed or have you heard anything about that? Uh, there's one that's, I think, stepped down because of his health. Anthony yeah. Morris stepped down because of his health? Yeah. So. Oh, okay. All right. So, what, you have a message today from the Bible, or? Oh, no, we just leave the magazines in. And, uh, we, okay. We, we get permission from places to leave them in. And we okay. Just leave Bible literature for people. Just out of curiosity, um, I was looking for a place. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses pray to Jehovah, correct? Okay, okay. Um, do you think that I should do that, or? Well, I mean, if you want uh, to be saved and to, you know, be one of his followers and stuff, yes, because he is the true God and the most powerful. He's the one that created the earth and us, so. Okay, so I have a call on... Jehovah, I need to pray to him, is what you're saying. Yes, and do, it do we have an example? I was trying to find a place in the Bible where Jesus prayed using the name Jehovah. Do you have one of those just off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head, but... Um, Sorry, I'm a little they, they said, you know, he says to pray to the Father, and then he also said, you know, now that he died for us, we, we do it through his name because... We pray That's through Jesus. Safe. Oh yeah, no, I definitely believe, so I'm with you that we should pray through the name of Jesus, right? Yes. Uh, totally. What I can't find is anywhere in the New Testament where any Christian, especially Jesus, who is the founder of our salvation, I can't see him praying to the name Jehovah. Well, I see, in fact, his father, so he prayed to his father, so. But yeah. then the, right, but people asked him, how should, should we pray? And he said, our Father. So he was including other people. Yes, uh, Jesus is the Son of God. And he prayed to his Father. And I believe that we should pray to Father too. I just can't see an example of praying to Jehovah in Scripture. And I think if I'm going to do something, 
like pray to Jehovah. I would love to just see any verse at all where they pray to Jehovah. Well, if you praying to Jehovah is the one who is the sovereign over all of us. So, and he, well, I believe that's his name. It's like uh, you're identifying him. Otherwise, if you're just praying to God, there's many gods. There are many gods, exactly. So, um, and I, I think just that issue alone that I can't find anything in the Bible, especially Jesus telling us to do that, I just don't, I can't seem to reconcile, you know, hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm doing good. Sorry, I, saw, I just happened to be coming to grab my laundry and I just was asking a question. Oh. I was trying to find a place in the Bible where I was asking, uh, do you believe that we should pray to Jehovah? Um, and your wife, I'm assuming? Uh, it's my friend, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't want to, I guess I assumed wrong. <laughs> um, that I can't see it to find a place where Jesus used the name Jehovah. Well. Praying. Like, where did he say Jehovah? And then that was his prayer. I see Father. So I was wondering if you had a place. Well, let me ask you a question. Sure. No doubt you loved your dad. I did. What'd you call him? Dad, father. But he had a name, didn't he? Yes, but out of respect, I would never walk up to my dad and say, Hey, Eddie. That's exactly right. So when people so, ask me that. So why should I do that to God then, who is higher than my father? And Jesus addressed him as father. When people asked Jesus, how should we pray? He said, our father. So I see Father in Scripture, John 17. There's many places where Jesus prayed to his Father. Exactly, right. But he never used the name Jehovah. In fact, no first century Christian uh, did that at all in the Bible. And I was right. just trying to find out a place that Jesus did it. If I'm going to do something, I would like it to be at least foundational that, that Jesus also instructed us to do so. Uh, one point that I appreciate as far as God, he's Jesus' Father. He's our Father. But he also has a name. And in Psalms 83, 18, it points out. Now whose name is Jehovah. The, Jehovah. Yeah. You alone are the most high over all the earth. Yeah, I, I so do believe like. Whether we pray. I believe in Yahweh or you know, Jehovah, I guess is fine. I'm not going to argue about the name itself. What I'm trying to find is I realize it's in the Old Testament like 6,900 times and some change. What I can't find is Jesus praying to Jehovah. And if he doesn't do it and didn't instruct anybody else to do it, then why should I? Okay, so if you don't pray to, you're still praying to, to God, but if you don't call him Jehovah, yeah. is that what you're saying? Right, why would, I, why, why would I use that name in prayer when no one in the New Testament did? No one. Well. Who says that you have to use that name in prayer? Do you think that we should follow what the Bible says? Absolutely. Okay. I, I didn't mean to take over. No, no, no you're fine. So uh, what I'm asking <laughs> then is, what you're saying then is, just, is just, just because it's not in the Bible, it's okay to do it. Because it's not in the Bible. Everything that we need in order to worship God is in the Bible. Including we can, prayer. We can have that. Because we wouldn't we know pray. how to pray. That's why Jesus' disciples were asking, and the people around him, teach us to pray. Like, of all the things to ask Jesus, right? The most beautiful thing to ask. Teach us to pray. Yeah, they and could he see said, that all the Pharisees were making a grand show of it. Jesus taught them. And he right, but those were his apostles asking. It wasn't the Pharisees or Sadducees or the... Right, but, those, they, but they, they saw those Pharisees praying, and they said, Jesus... Yeah, they, they were all like, look at exactly. us. I'm glad I'm not like that guy. Exactly. So their, their prayers weren't heard. Right. And the guy who went in his closet and shut the door and turned the lights off and just seeked out God and said, I am thy sinner, God, hear me. He was heard. Right. So, and, but the. And he didn't necessarily have to say Jehovah. He could pray to him as his father. Okay. And it still would not change the fact that God's name is Jehovah. Okay. And that he has a desire for everyone to know his name because his name has been defamed. Right. And it identifies, like, 
if you went into a super, I mean a, a Walmart, and you hollered out "Dad," how many dads might hear you and answer? You know what's cool? There'd be a bunch of them. But the father who knows his children would know that voice. Well, he would know. So then, who's the hearer then? But if the father, if who's the, the one calling out, is the child. But if that's the, a great example, and so we see the, the same. One, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If the one that's calling out wanted to identify which one it was. Because like like I heard y'all talking about, there's many gods yeah. and many lords. Yeah, there are false gods, yeah. Right, right. So if you're trying to be specific and you're saying father, which father? Right. So but that's, it would be important to know. But the listener, but the uh, father would know. The father would know. So then the, the there's no problem praying. then. If I'm praying to father, but I don't know who that father is, when he answers my prayer, how do I know that? Because that's interesting. That's how I did it. I was uh, homeless. I was in Berkeley, California. I was having a lot of issues. And I just cried out to God. I said, I want to know you, I God. Know you. Show yeah. me who you are. And you know who he sent? A friend of mine who told me about Jesus, and then I learned about the work that Jesus did, the finished work that Jesus completed, that he would die for our sins, that right. he was buried, he rose on the third day, and at the beautiful whose, message of the gospel. Request, I'm sorry. Why did he do that? Yes. What do you mean, why did he do that? Because we're sinners and who, we needed a Savior. Who sent him? The Father. Right. Yep. So again, Father. So I just can't seem to find anywhere in the New Testament where Jesus or any of the apostles or anybody prayed to Jehovah using that name. In fact, I can't even find a place where Jesus used that name. Well, like I... I Do you have a place where Jesus even used, used that name? No, but that doesn't mean that he didn't know it. I'm not saying he didn't know it. For certainty, he knew in, in fact, Yahweh. However, what I'm asking is... I was going to I was gonna point this out. Okay. In 1 Corinthians 8, 5, it says, For even though there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, there are many gods and many lords. There's actually to us one God, the Father, from whom all things are and we for them. Who did it say again? God who? The Father. Uh, the Father. So it didn't and say then, Jehovah. That's interesting. And then there is one Lord, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, through whom all things are. So, so who does Paul identify as God, at? the Father? Uh, he's saying, so he's differentiating between Jesus and the Father. Right. There's absolutely a difference in a, in a prayer to his Father. Let's see. John chapter 17. Yeah. Verse 6. What does it say there? It says, I have made your name manifest to the men who you gave me out of the world. They were yours. Oh, I'm sorry. And yeah. you gave them to me, and they have observed my word. So, Jesus made God's name known. Where, where did he do that in the New Testament? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Where did Jesus say, I'm making the name Jehovah known to you? Where did he do that? I don't know. Where did Jesus so say? So could it be that he, what he says in the name, could it be that it's not the letters, but he's talking about the kingship of the Father. I have come in the name of the king. And that still represents the king who has a name. Right, but, but what he's saying is... Why are you, if I may ask, yeah. why are you so concerned that it has to be a specific written for your benefit because i believe that jesus came into the world john 1 18 to make god known to manifest who god would be and jesus would do that through himself so yeah, jesus said seen god at any time and so talking jesus about the sent, father yeah jehovah sent jesus so that we could get a physical representation about god's qualities you've seen me you've seen the father again yeah. father so what I'm saying, though, is that it's important to me because if Jesus doesn't teach it and a group of people just say, it's, we, you, you need to do this, 
So at the Kingdom Hall, if you were to pray before the congregation and you just used Father, would that be okay or not okay? Or do or oh, I don't. Are you expected to use Jehovah? When I pray, yeah, I pray from my heart in an earnest prayer. Yeah, and I'm not required to follow any set dogma or format. If I choose to say, "Dear Heavenly Father," that's perfectly fine. At the Kingdom Hall. At the Kingdom Hall. I'd like to see that. <laughs> we, we have, I'd like to see, because uh, I watch the JW broadcasting. We have a meeting yeah. every Sunday at 4 o'clock, except for this Sunday. We're going to be in Carthage. And come, and you will see that it's not a requirement that you recognize Jehovah in your prayer or that you say his name. Yeah. Um, so back to what I was Forget just going to say, though. So I, I just firmly believe that what we believe should be foundationally found in the Bible. Okay. Not just an organization told me that I should do this. I'm going to go ahead and do it, even though I can't find it in the Bible. All right. But if you found something in the Bible that you weren't doing, would you then say, I got to do it? If there was something in the scriptures that I was not doing, that I was supposed to be doing, right. absolutely. I would definitely do my best <laughs> to do that. All right, this is Hebrews. Okay. The Apostle Paul wrote it. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, okay. verses 24 and 25. Yeah, and let us consider one another to incite to love and fine works, not forsaking the meeting together, as some have the custom, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. I am a church goer, and I love Hebrews 10, 24, 25. I go every week. All right. So everyone that att attends your church yeah. would need to be following the same guidelines. Guidelines. From the scriptures, yeah, all over the world. Okay, they do. In fact, it's awesome you said that. We are uh, truly united by the Word of God, Excellent. by Jesus. Excellent. We all are interdwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. We all have His Spirit. Jesus said, "If you don't have My Spirit, <coughs> then you're none of Mine." Well, have you guys been born again? Then you're doing very well. Have you been born again? Uh, in what respect? In what respect? So born again, when Jesus said it, he wasn't talking about a destination. Like if you're born again, then you're going to heaven. Right. He was talking about born again. Of the, the link, First John 3, 3, is a link kind of to First John 5, 1. Whosoever believes Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Okay. Born from above. So what it means in, in that respect, is yes. forgiven. We have been, uh, both of us are baptized as Jehovah's Witnesses, okay. we have accepted Jesus as our Savior, and we have received Holy Spirit. Which, which Jesus? Now, the reason I ask that, that may sound crazy, but Paul warned in 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4, to be, to be careful of other Jesuses, other Gospels, and other spirits. So a lot of people say Jesus, the Mormons say Jesus, but they mean Satan's brother. The Muslims say Jesus, but they mean not your savior did not die for your sins and he's definitely not the son of god well so we the jehovah's Jesus witnesses as the son of god is he michael the archangel absolutely where does it say that jesus is michael the archangel it doesn't say because you're looking for specifics to suit yourself oh no i'm looking for specifics to to do the right like to identify jesus, who jesus is jesus it never says that jesus is the mark archangel oh okay but the archangel and Jesus have the same role. When Jesus comes... Where does it say Jesus and Michael have the same role? Uh, like that wording. Jesus well, and was, Michael have the same role. Because that sounds like two separate people. Now. They accomplished the same thing. Could Jesus have had another name before he came to the earth? Do you think Michael could have come to the earth to die for our sins? Uh one of God's creations came to the earth. So you think Michael came 
became flesh, died for our sins, rose on the third day, and still what lives. What if Michael was the name of God, uh, God's firstborn son before he came to the earth? Well, I realize that Washtower teaches that his name means who is like God, so that must mean ergo. Well, they're, they're, But Gabriel means mighty like God, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that Gabriel came and died for my sins uh, either. I would say Jesus, the truly unique, one of a kind. What makes him unique? Jesus mm -hmm. is that he's the God-man. He is fully God and fully man. Then how did he die if he was fully God? Yeah, so that's great. I'm glad you asked that. So hypostatic union is a big word. It just means fully God, fully man. God cannot where die. Where you say that in the scriptures that you're talking about? Oh, yeah. So let's open up to John chapter 1. And the first verse. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word and was the Word God. And the Word was with God. And the Word, and the was, word was a God. Yeah, that's a... That's given to, so that part right there, the word was a God. Yeah. So the Watchtower used, uh, oh, I can't think of his name right this second. But anyway, the, the translation of John 1, 1 being a God is something that the Watchtower used from, actually, they won't quote him anymore because he was a pagan, and that's where they got that from. Or they also try to support it with Archbishop Newcomb. Uh, so I would be concerned when the Watchtower. Okay, regardless. So then John, and then down, the a word of, became flesh. So he's God, and he became flesh. He is a God. Well, that's according to the New World Translation's translation of John 1.1. 1, 1. Okay. Every scholar that I know completely uh, just disagrees. Let Mary Ellen know that we're okay. Hey. Oh, okay. Are you in a hurry? <coughs> we're uh, having a really nice conversation. Okay. <laughs> So, but it says though in John that the word became flesh yeah, and dwelt. The, the so word. watch, so watch the word dwelt. Though. Hang on, I want to finish. The word dwelt means t John pulled the Hebrew word tabernacled. So I'm a body and God interdwelt the body of Jesus, the second person of the triune God. So when Jesus was here on earth, he was fully God, fully man. John chapter, or Mark, says, who can forgive sins but God alone? Then why would he pray to himself if he was God? Yeah. So he praying to himself is modalism, which is where God lives in modes. One minute he's the father, one minute he's the son. The church has so, rejected modalism uh, because Jesus was not praying to himself. He was praying to his he, father. Uh, Yes. Now, yes. He is alive in the heavens because he resurrected him on the third day. He, he was dead. If, he if Jesus was, was God, he couldn't have resurrected himself. He couldn't have died. If I, if I could show you a then scripture, he really hang wasn't on. dead. Well, the person of Jesus, his body died, but the person of Jesus still lived. So he didn't really offer up his life as a sacrifice. He offered it, yes, he did, his body. Well, then he died. Well, watch this. The person did, but not God. So if, my flesh, if, if you he, kill my flesh, I don't cease to if exist. He was, if he was existing and then died for our sins, but didn't really die. He, he did didn't. really die, but God cannot die. So uh, his body, no, hope? no, there is hope because no. he offered his body. Jesus, Can I show you? If I could show you a verse where Jesus said, I will resurrect myself. Will you believe it? I will be resurrected on the third day. No, no, no. I'll, if I show you a verse where Jesus says, I resurrect myself, will you, will you believe me? Uh, watch this. Hang I on. I John don't chapter. We're getting anywhere. Well, watch this, though. Check this My out. My name's Don. Don, let yeah. me read you one verse. What's your name? David. David. Let me quote one thing and I'll let you it's, go, I promise. It's nice to visit with you, but Check I don't this out. think we're getting anywhere. Well, watch, watch this. John chapter 2. Verse 19 to 21. The Jews said, show us a sign. If you're going to flip over the tables, you know, he flipped over yeah. the tables, did all that stuff. He's, they said, show us a sign. Jesus said, destroy this temple. And I will resurrect it in three days. And I will raise it up <laughs> in three days. Watch in verse 21. Well, the Jews were grumbling amongst themselves, saying it took us 46 years to build the temple, and right. you're going to raise it in three days? Right. What did the Holy Spirit write under inspiration? Through John. But they were, 
Jesus was talking about what? His body. So he didn't really die. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, he did really die. I'm not sure why that's funny, in, but in he, he did really die. If he died, then he didn't die. If he died, but didn't die, he didn't give up anything. Yeah, he, John 1, he gave his life. No man has seen God at any time. Right. So if you've seen God, if you've seen Jesus, but you haven't seen God, again, they're not the same. You're, you're arguing over modalism, uh, which I understand. That's just a big fancy word. It's not a really all that what big of a fancy it? word. David? Yeah. Nice to I meet you, David. Okay. Well, I originally was asking about day. Tony Morris and how he was removed from the governing body. Do you think it was because he got caught with $900 worth of booze? You think that was the case? He got caught no. outside of New York. He, no. There was a video. You can watch the video. It's him. Hey. And he was buying with your and, money. And you know. But he's asking kids to give ice cream money. And you know. And then he's spending 900 on booze. Like, what do you think the, of that? Everything on the internet is believable, right? Oh, no, I didn't say that. Okay. So the fact that you saw it on YouTube? You know, it's all over. It's not just on YouTube, but there's different videos of legit sources. I mean, it's not it's not all just apostate-driven lies. Then whatever his reason... Do you think that was part of the reason? I, I doubt it. You doubt it? Uh, do you think he bought $900 worth of booze? Do you think I he would do something idea. like that? There would be nothing Have you heard of that? With buying any amount of booze. I had a good reason. Hmm. I have no idea. And do you think but, the little children, though, that he was telling to give their ice cream money to the organization, <laughs> why would he go buy $900 worth of booze? Well, what would one man's actions have to do with the entire organization? Because supposedly he is directed by God. He's used directly by God to direct the organization. He's telling kids to give so, them his ice cream money, and then he goes buy $900 and, and worth of booze. Because you saw it on the internet? No, I'm just saying what he does. It's a real video. I mean, it's a real video of him buying $900 worth of booze. Now, I'm not saying buying and, booze is wrong, and, but when you tell children to give him your ice cream money, and then he's off buying... And do you, do you see where he's telling kids to give them their ice cream money? Yeah, in, in, in a children's video. Okay. Have you seen that one? No. I, uh, I appreciate talking with you. Guys, I hope you, I hope you come to know the real Jesus. And, uh, yep, have a good day. I guess they're leaving.